I promise this gravidarium is the most severe form of nausea and vomiting during pregnancy. HG causes malnutrition, electrolyte imbalances, and dehydration, which, if not treated, can be life threatening to the mother and her unborn child. Listed here are some of the signs and symptoms as weight loss, dehydration, headaches, ketosis, jaundice, rapid heart rate, etc. Hi, YouTube! Today I'm talking about my experience and my battle with hyperemesis gravidarum. I know it sounds like a big word and a lot of you may be confused as to what it is and I understand. So basically, hyperemesis gravidarum, HG for short, throughout the course of this, this video I'll be referring to that as HG. So hyperemesis gravidarum is a severe life-threatening pregnancy illness characterized by extreme nausea relentless vomiting and which causes an inadequate intake of food and fluids it is not the same as morning sickness and i think that is that is the biggest thing when it comes to hg because in the beginning a lot of women think it's morning sickness and it's really not it's from my personal experience when i was pregnant i mean the beginning i think i found out i was pregnant at two weeks and everything seemed fine at first and i was not experiencing any nausea or nothing like that so i thought oh this is quite cool and then i think when i hit around six weeks that is when it hit me like a train i started feeling so nauseous and I was throwing up like crazy and I was thinking to myself I thought I thought this was supposed to be morning sickness no but this is literally all day sickness and I used to joke about that I said why is it called morning sickness because I feel generally very sick throughout the day and I was throwing up like crazy Throwing up like 15 in the beginning like 12 15 times a day and I could barely eat anything in the beginning I all I could take was um really spicy food loads of pepper right from the beginning that was the only thing that was helping a little bit with my nausea but as the pregnancy progressed I I, I didn't want anything to do with pepper the worst thing as an HG survivor, the worst thing during that time that anybody can tell you is that, oh, it's just, it's just morning sickness and you will be fine. That, that is the worst thing because I knew at the time that what I was going through was not, it, I, I knew that it couldn't be morning sickness because of how I was feeling. I know that when women, a lot of women are pregnant, you know, the morning you get in the morning, you don't feel too well. Sometimes you throw up one or two times and by afternoon, you know, you go to work, you're going about your day and it's pretty manageable. But I found that I could not, I could not function throughout the day. I couldn't do the simplest things that I used to do. And I remember just going in my head and thinking, what is wrong with me? Why am I feeling, why is my pregnancy different? Why do I feel literally useless and it does not help when people make remarks it's, it's the i think the biggest thing is, is the is the judgment of other women and people in your life maybe family members or friends and i know that they mean well but it's just not easy especially in the beginning people sometimes people are a bit insensitive and like you're just pregnant like women have been doing this every day when i was pregnant i used to have morning sickness throughout and throwing up it was okay by three months everything was okay and i was fine just take some ginger ale or crackers and i know that they mean well but the thing is i tried everything in the book and it was not working i was eating ginger literally chewing on ginger I got myself some crackers, saltine crackers. I still have some crackers in my in, in my cupboard right now. I was doing everything and it was just not working and I couldn't understand why I was just so sick and, and all these remedies that I was told 
to, to, to try were not working out for me. And HG is a very isolating illness because for victims, so I would like to say victims or survivors of age or people going through it, you feel very misunderstood. You feel like you were alone. Nobody understands you. It's difficult to communicate how you feel because a lot of times, a lot of people think, oh, she just wants attention. She's exaggerating. You know, this... I know I'm pregnant. So I have been pregnant. I, I, She's exaggerating. Clearly, she's, she probably just wants attention. And that is the hardest part of HG because I feel like there has not been... A lot of research and there's not a lot of education out there about this illness because I think studies show that about just one percent or two percent of women experience HG during pregnancy and so you can understand if there's just one or two percent of women going through this the vast the rest are like they don't they don't know what you are talking about most of the time and it's very hurtful especially when people who are close to you family members make certain remarks and snipe comments which make you just it just makes you feel sink you into a depression literally for me when it started and i i stopped eating i couldn't eat anything i think all i started doing was ice chips that's all i could take i just lived off eating ice chips and it was okay for a while until it became not okay i couldn't take that again and I remember my first visit to a and &E, I was severely dehydrated. They, I had a urine test and they found ketones in my urine and said, yeah, you were dehydrated. And I had to, they had to put in some IV fluids for me and um, put me on anti-sickness. I must say the first anti-sickness they gave, I think it's called um, cyclazine. I'll say right now, I hate cyclazine. I hate that drug so much because it did nothing for me. All I felt was, I was just drowsy and, and if anything, it just made me throw up the more. Imagine how difficult it is. Here you are, you've been sent to the hospital, A&E, you've been given IV fluids, you've been given that sickness and you're supposed to feel better. Why, why are you still in bed? Why are you still acting like you're dying? Girl, you're just pregnant. Why, why are you still doing this? And I didn't know who to tell or how to explain myself or how to let them people actually understand how i felt because i just felt like this drug that they've given me is not helping i'm still throwing up like 15 times or 12 times a day and it's, it's i just feel sick as a dog so i started that was the point that i started going on the internet and putting in my symptoms and trying to find out about pregnancy illnesses and morning sickness and throwing up and it just the light bulb just came on when i started reading about hyperemesis and the symptoms and I went on forums where women loads of women were talking about the experiences it led me to YouTube where I watched dozens of, of videos about women sharing the experience of their HG journeys and I was like oh my god this is exactly what I'm going through and I was so a bit relieved to find that I was not the only one in this situation but the challenge was who was I going to tell how was I going to explain to my family and people close to me that, look, I have this thing called HG and, you know, without looking crazy. So for a while, I was just putting on a brave face and I was counting down to the three, the three months, well, three months came to pass and I was just getting worse. So I think the, 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 the climax of, of it all was when I stopped drinking water. I couldn't take in any flu fluids were out. I couldn't take in water. Because if I took a cup of water right now, in less than five minutes, I was in the toilet throwing everything up. I could not hold down any water. So I became severely dehydrated. I was so fatigued. My throat was burning because it was so dry. My chest was on fire. So I started, and there was no food in my tummy. So basically, when I would throw up, throw up the water, my tummy was empty so i started throwing a bile if you've ever thrown up but you know what i'm saying it's a yellow this yellow liquid started coming out and it was so bitter because there was no nothing in there to throw up and then when the bile was done coming i started throwing up blood yes that was how deep it went i started throwing up blood my throat was tight my lips were cracked i i i couldn't function i was in bed and i kept telling my hubby like 
can't i'm babe i'm so weak i'm so weak i'm so weak and god bless my husband he he did not understand what i was going through but he was he did his very best he was so supportive i was useless around the house he was doing everything and he still he was i was he was trying his best but i remember my sister-in-laws came around to visit and one look at me and they were we were like you need to go you need to go see a doctor now now i was literally died and by this time you could see it on me because i lost so much weight i had lost a lot of weight because i was not eating i was not drinking i was just as pale as paper and i remember um i stopped working i couldn't work anymore there was no way i could function at work and my supervisor unfortunately and my managers they were not so understanding and they just couldn't understand why i was going on i was not I mean, there were pregnant women at my work who were still working and strong. So what, what's your excuse, really? It was a very dark time for me. And everything set off made me really ill, especially when it came to smells. I know that when you're pregnant, you have a heightened sense of smell. But I feel like this sense of smell was on steroids. Everything made me so sick, including Jordan perfume. I would beg my husband, look, put on your perfume when you're in the car, ready to go to work. Please don't do it here. Sometimes he would forget and I would catch a whiff of his perfume and I'm like, he has killed me. Yeah, he, he has killed me. He has finished me. That's my day. The whole day I'll be sick as a dog. I hated it so much. I hated the smell of um, detergent. I couldn't come to the kitchen. I just couldn't be in my house, basically. It was so debilitating and that's the thing. You're, you're always in the toilet. I literally would crawl to the bathroom, sit on the floor and... All I did was throwing up because it's like every 20 minutes I was throwing up. You do the math. If you have 24 hours in a day and every 20 minutes you're, you're throwing up, do the math. I was throwing up like crazy. So I basically lived in the toilet. I lived in the bathroom. That's where I lived. I couldn't do nothing. I couldn't function. And that was the apex of everything. And then I finally went to a and &E and I was on admission. I think I was admitted for a week. And during that time, it was... IV fluid after fluid after fluid. I stopped counting after seven or so. This one comes off, another bag is put in. This one goes up, another bag. It was just endless. And then they changed. I told them that this cyclism you gave me the first time, this anti sickness drug is not working. Please give me something else. And I think they gave, I've forgotten the name of that one. But the thing about that one was whenever the nurse would administer it, I think in the morning she would put it in my IV thing. And Every, immediately she put it in there and maybe after two minutes I couldn't breathe I was literally panting for my life every breath that I took I would get out of the bed and go like, <laughs> and she was she was like what's going on I said I can't breathe I can't breathe I can't breathe and she would say oh it will be okay just relax and maybe after 10 minutes I'll be okay but I realized that every time she would give me I was going to die, okay? So one day I said, no, don't don't give me that again, please. I don't, just, that drug is not even helping with my nausea. And, and every time you give it to me, I was out. I, I can't breathe. So she had to talk to the doctor and then they gave me something else. I think, what's the name of that drug? Jesus Christ, that was the only thing that worked for me. I think it's called Zofran. But in, in London, what, that's an, I'll tell you when I remember. It's that was the only drug that made me feel like a human being again. So finally, I was discharged. But by saying that, it made me feel like a human being again. I was not throwing up, let's say, 20 times a day. I was throwing up maybe 10 times a day. That doesn't mean that nausea had gone away. No, I still felt sick. I was nauseous. I couldn't eat, but at least I could drink water. <laughs> at least I could hold down my water. That was the only thing. So... I think the only thing that I was drinking, funny enough, I was craving beer. <laughs> and I'm not even a beer drinker. I was like, what? You want beer? And I said, yeah. And I couldn't take beer because I was pregnant. So he had to get me, um, I didn't even know that there was non-alcoholic beer. I was drinking non-alcoholic beer like crazy. Like nobody, that was all I was drinking. I was not eating. That was all I was doing. Um, but I feel like if you were a woman, and you are going through this if you are pregnant and you your gut is telling you that you're really ill and your gut is telling you it is more than morning sickness 
there's a good chance that it is more than morning sickness please seek medical attention don't let anybody guilt trip you into, think, into thinking that it's just um morning sickness and you should keep quiet and endure the way people who would even say oh you are faking being ill listen it's easy to fake being ill but do you know the saddest thing the saddest thing is faking being well have you ever faked wellness i feel like that's my story i had to for the most part i had to put on a brave face and fake being well because i didn't want the judgment i didn't want people the comments that were coming because um at some point i think a family member something happened there was some sort of meeting that i was supposed to go to and i couldn't get out of bed i couldn't i just couldn't go and i and i wanted my hobby to go but later on i had it was told that i had to be there and the up to up to now i've told hobby about this i've not actually told the person who said it but comments were made like oh yeah she didn't she didn't want to be here she looked angry when she was here she she didn't she she looked well some upset when she was no i was i was sick as a dog i had to do you know what it took for me to come over do you know what it took i feel like a lot of times i had to put on a brave face and pretend to be okay and go for stuff and go out because i just didn't like some of the comments that were coming and people looking at me like oh yeah she's 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 looking for attention so please people let's be kind let's learn to be kind kindness especially if you are you are family if you are you claim to be family and you're close to this person stop the unnecessary judgment just because you've been pregnant a hundred times and you you you've experienced a bit of morning sickness and it was okay it doesn't mean if another woman is going through a different experience, don't judge her. You don't know her, her storm. All she needs from you is your support, your understanding. Just offer her understanding. And if you want to help an HG person who is suffering from HG, you know what? how you can be there as a family member. If you care so much about her, offer some help. She may not ask you. She, don't tell her, call me when you need me or... How about you help her do the little things? Help her run her house when you have the time. Help her with her laundry. Help clean up her house. Hoover her house for her one time if you have the chance. Cook her a meal. Don't ask her to come and ask you when she needs it. That's some of the little ways that you can reach out and be human. And these are the same people who will now come and ask you. Oh, when are you having another baby? What did you do to help me when I was dying? What did you do? Do you understand? I feel like... And people don't talk a lot about the aftermath of HG. It's it's really people don't talk about how it affects the woman, how it affects your mind. Up till now, I still have anxiety when it comes. To, I think of having another child, and I feel like right now where I am right now, my son is sixteen months, and people have started asking, "When are you having another baby?" So you have to have another child now because blah. I get that, and I know that pff, you mean well. Yeah, I get it, but you don't understand what. Because you did not understand my journey, because you did not understand what I suffered, it's easy for you to now come and ask, do you know how annoying it is? Do you know how annoying it is? I mean, it's her, It's sad that I have to say it, but I feel low-key. I feel like, yeah, you mean the best for me, obviously. I love you, but you, you, you don't understand what it takes. And the funny thing is, after my experience with AG, it was after I had had my baby that I joined these support groups, they are amazing hyperemesis groups on Facebook that offer amazing support. And there are so many women going through it. And every day you see a story from one pregnant woman who is ranting, crying about what her husband might have said, what a family member. And there's so much support and information there that I wish that when I was going through it, I would have joined these people and had a bit of support in that area. Do you understand? And um, I feel like, and at some point, the poor people don't know it's, it's life threatening. Women have lost their lives. Children, women have even considered abortion. A lot of women, studies have shown that, have aborted pregnancies because of HG, because they felt like they couldn't carry on. If you don't know, do your research. A lot of men, and there were times when doctors had even had to induce abortion because of the life-threatening situation of hg there are women who miscarried during this time there are babies that didn't make it to the birth that is how serious hg is because at some point i think around my 
I think around 27 weeks or so, I started having contractions, false contractions. At that time, I didn't know what, I knew that my, my abdomen was really hurting and I, I had to brave it for about four days or so. But the, the last day around dawn, I was crawling on my knees. I was on my knees and I was crying because it was too much. So my husband, I think it was around 4 a.m., my hubby just said, let's go, we are going to the ER. And as I was getting ready, I started bleeding and that was that also set off an alarm bell. And I went, they did that, they had a scan. They said baby was fine, everything was okay. But then I was having false contractions. That's what the nurse told you have false contractions. Eh? I said, huh? You call these false contractions? What? I was so mad at that nurse, but I know she was only doing her job. But I just doff my hat off to women who have gone through contractions and, and natural birth. Like you are superheroes in my eyes because what I was going through, child, it was I was ready for that baby to come out. I remember when I was on the, my way to the ER, I was telling my husband, "Listen, I, I, I want I'm going to tell the doctors to take him out." And when I got to the clinic house, I told the doctor, can, we, can you take him out now, please? And he said, no, I can't do that. It's not in the best interest of the baby. But I was done. I was ready for this baby to come out. I, I was still like, please take him out. Yeah, take him out. And it was so sad. They had to put a steroid, a steroid patch, I've forgotten the name, on my on my bum. Just to, I think they said it slows down the contractions and stuff. So I had to be... I was it was a mess the whole day was I was there sniffing gas and air like <laughs> and the nurse the annoying nurse kept telling me not too much honey and do it in moderation blah 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 and I was like if you don't get lost from my face I was busy sucking on the gas and air and my husband was here pulling it babe can you can you start no get that to me I it was a mess but all in all it was the experience it was difficult but at the end as the cliche it was worth it um i had a cesarean i ended up having a cesarean section because i had the breech presentation and so i was i was done i needed this baby out anyway i just signed us like give me cs like i don't care i just at this point i just just i need that baby out i, I need that baby out and in the end i had cesarean section my baby came out he was healthy i was happy but the journey it was so difficult at some point i was like is it, is it even worth it that going through all this all these things just to carry it is it worth it and there were so many times days and nights that i cried and cried and cried and felt so misunderstood and felt lonely so i'm reaching out to you hg mamas i see you you are not alone. You are not alone. You can do this. You are strong. You 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 seek seek medical help. Please don't let anybody tell you don't take medicine. No, you don't have to take drugs. It's not good. Please, you can lose your life. You can lose your child. Take the drugs they give you. Medicate yourself, fluffy. Like just do something to help yourself. Don't wait and try to brave it don't try to put on a strong whatever to, to so that people will not judge you because i felt i feel like at some point i was doing that i was putting on a brave face just so that people will not judge me just so that people will not i was afraid of what people were saying and i was hurt and all that but it's not worth it you know take care of you take care of your child get help thank god now i think doctors are beginning to know more about hyperemesis and there are their measures that are being put in place right now to help um hg moms there's a world of information out there and i remember when i was pregnant i think that's as, around that time kate middleton was also pregnant and it was on the news that she has she had hyperemesis as well and that was when there were conversations opening up online. Hyperemesis, what is hyperemesis? And people were wondering. And some of the comments were so shocking. Some of the comments were sad when I read. But I, I understood what she was going through. People were talking about her bum, how it's small. And I went through that as well. You, said, you have a little bum. How how far along were you? Or are you? I was skinny. I was losing weight. My I, Your bum was dragging the floor. Good for you. But I was skinny as hell. I was not eating. My, my bum was... A little bum but my baby was so healthy and some of all these comments are unnecessary 
and this accent people when are you having another baby you mean well but please can you stop that apart from hg hg aside stop it stop it stop asking people when are you having another baby stop telling people even they are ready they will do so if you want you should so, uh, offer your support and your love that's the most important thing. that's what is needed Le stay out of people's wombs so if you enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up if you have any questions about hyperemesis leave your comments down below if you have an experience that you want to share feel free to share it down below in the comment section send me an email at hugets.nedu at gmail.com and i will reply i will if you have any relationship or life issue that you want my take on i will do that as well make sure you check out all my other videos i have other interesting videos that you can check out and most importantly please subscribe and share <laughs> subscribe and share please i love you so much thank you for watching Bye.